This is a fifth to my series on OpenTX programming for helicopters. They were only intended to be four parts, but in the fourth part I detailed some issues I was having in getting the programming to work properly for helis requiring CCMP mixing in the transmitter. Specifically, switchable rates, which I defined for the cyclic inputs in a normal way on the inputs page, did not seem to work for my heli. I would switch the rate down from 100 to 70% and there would be hardly any difference at all in how the swash would react to cyclic stick movements. In that fourth video I suggested a couple of possible workarounds, but they were not really satisfactory, certainly not ideal. Since making that previous video, I've raised this issue in the official Open uh, TX 2.3 thread on RC groups, and several helpful people there have assisted in respect to diagnosing what was going on. It seems that the problem is that swash ring limiting will not work properly with rates specified on the inputs page. See, and these are the rates specified on the inputs page, switched on G from 70 to 100%. Um, but um, the problem is that when you put a value in here, when you put a value, sorry, I'm having a little bit of a technical problem here. <laughs> um, uh, because my notes keep going away when I'm trying to uh, to look at things. Um, uh, it, it seems that the problem is that swash ring limiting will not work properly. Swash ring limiting is enabled by putting a value in here into into uh, the swash swash ring, and with the current version of OpenTX and what I mean by current version, I'm making this video in December 2019 and I'm using 2.3.3 um, Release Candidate 2, which is the most recent version. It appears that this problem has been present at least until two, since 2.2, basically since the heli page looked like this with swash ring and with the three weights on the side there. I, I believe ever since the, 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 the heli page has looked like this, it probably has been processed the same way. Um, if a number other than zero is entered in, in the swash ring there, then swash ring limiting will be applied. And because of the way this is applied currently, essentially it's applied after the input page parameters have all been processed, the input values will be clipped after processing. So any rates that you put in on the inputs page here will not in fact be reflected properly at all in the cyclic outputs if you got a swash ring value in here. So this 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 problem can be avoided if the swash ring value is set to zero, which is the initial de default um, when you come to the heli page. Uh, with zero in the swash ring, the limiting is disabled and the variable weights on the heli page will work as they should. So uh, for example, where am I? If I'm in a hundred percent, see, if I switch to G, I'm in a hundred percent rates, and I get my um, my channel uh, one, for example, deflects there to minus fifty percent. If I switch it, if I switch it down to seventy percent, it only deflects to minus twenty percent. So, and the same way, of course, going the other way goes up to all the way up to 100. Well, that's another issue. We'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> so the rates are working. When I put when I put um, zero into swash ring, the rates are working the way they should. But this brings us back to another problem. There was a good reason why I originally put a number into swash ring. I didn't just do it for fun. Without a value in swash ring, with the default values on the heli page, which is, these are the default values, 0, 100, 100, 100, the cyclic servo channels reach 100% well before the stick is at maximum throw. Um, Throttle active. Especially if you're at high, so if I'm at maximum pitch there, and I start moving my cyclic servo out. If you watch channel six, okay, my stick is nowhere at the near the corner, but channel six has, has already reached 100%. And 
and if I go down to the other corner, now, now channel 1 is at 100%, but I'm not at the corner. And now channel 1 is at minus 100%, but I'm not at the corner. So basically, what's happening is that the, the, the servos are reaching 100%. The servos are going out rapidly, and the server channel values are going up rapidly, or down rapidly. And they're reaching 100%. Um, before your stick reaches the maximum deflection. Now, this is not a good thing at all. It's not a good thing at all. It means you'll get proper but strong control around center stick, and when you push the stick further away from the center region, once one of those channels reaches 100%, it's basically maxed out and will freeze and can't change anymore. So that channel won't change, but the other two channels will continue to change. In this case, we've got three cyclic servers, 120 degrees apart. So basically, your, your your control gets all distorted as you move the stick further out. And of course, the amount of pitch you're commanding on the collective is also contributing to the value of the cyclic servos. So the more pitch you have collective, the more that will tend to reduce your control over the cyclic. Because the cyclics, you know, as you move the cyclic stick, when the pitch is already pushing the servos up, they'll reach 100% more quickly. Um, so that was why I put the swash ring value in, to reduce the cyclic servo channel values so that they did not reach 100% until max stick throw. And I found to do that with my original heli model, I needed to put it in a swash ring value of about 40. But now, I don't want to put in a swash ring value since that stops the cyclic inputs working properly, so what can I do? Well, fortunately, the answer is fairly simple. I can use the other numbers on the uh, heli page, these numbers, the weights for the, uh, for the various inputs to reduce the servo channel. So, let me just look at another model here a minute. So here I've got the swash limb set to zero. And I found, um, by experimenting, that with my original heli model, with the swash limiting disabled, swash ring set to zero, I had to reduce the, the numbers, the weights of the three inputs to 54 in order to get full pitch range, in order to basically stop the sticks reeking 100% before, uh, you know, before, I, got, before I got to the corners. So now, see, with those 54 weights set, I move my stick towards the corner. Oh, I'm in low rates. Mm -hmm. high you need to see it in high rates as well. I, I, so I'm in high rates. I've switched to switch these down. I'm in 100% rates. So when I move all the way to the corner, Yes, yeah, see, channel 6 is just reaching 100% there. And now channel 2 is just reaching 100%. No, for some reason, nobody's reaching 100% in that corner. Well, I guess because I've got high pitch set. But if I had low pitch set, it would probably. If I have negative pitch set, yes, then channel 6 reaches minus 100%. So basically, with, these, with the weight set to 54, that you can see, if you watch channel 2 now, and that it, it just reaches 100%. It just reaches 100% as I get to the corner. So this, you know, these the weights of 54% cause it to just reach um, uh, 100%. The, the, the channel values to just reach 100% as the the sticks go to the corner. But the thing is, in this version, I've got a relatively mild pitch curve. My pitch curve for idle up is only going between minus 50% and plus 50%. So, in other words, um, oh, sorry about this. I'm having some trouble switching backwards and forth between my different things here. Um, so my, my pitch is only going between 50% and minus 50% and plus 50%. If I want to allow for full pitch travel from minus 100% to 100%, then I'm, more, then I'm going to get more input from the pitch. So then I need to have 
have less input eventually from the cyclic so they can both go all in together. Um, so here I've changed my pitch curve for idle up 2 to go all the way from minus 100 to plus 100. And basically with that, with the pitch going all the way from minus 100 to, to plus 100 in order to get full movement only going up to 100% when the cyclic goes all the way to the corners, I actually have to set the weights down to 42. With the weights set down to 42, you can have pitch going, <laughs> I beg your pardon, you can have pitch going all the way from minus 100 to plus 100 and still have full proportional control of your um, cyclic all the way to the corners of the throw. So, the bottom line is, this is what I suggest, essentially. Start by configuring your heli page this way. Put zero in swash ring, put 42 into all the weights. You know, you would, this is normally, you would, this is how you would, you, your inputs, your longitudinal cyclic is going to come from your elevator, and your lateral cyclic is going to come from your aileron, and you're going to have a separate input defined for your collective. <coughs> I beg your pardon. So set them all to 42 set swash ring to zero. Then go and set up your pitch curves as you believe they should be. Set up any variable rates you want on the inputs page if you want them, which I do. And then check your channels by simulating in companion and make sure that everything looks okay. So I've got my rates in the inputs page. I simulate. I'm in. I check all my different modes. I check you know, idle up, that's idle up two. Up one. Check idle all my one. modes, and I check, up two. and I check full stick movement from all, through all the corners, and I check that I'm getting the movement of the channels the way that I want them to move. And I only want the channels to reach 100% when everything, when the pitch is maximum, and the cyclic is in one of its corners that's the only time that they should they should the chat the servo should reach 100 so far as i'm concerned because otherwise i'm not getting full proportional control over the whole range of the stick movement so check in your check in check in uh, companion that everything seems to be working correctly and then so long as that looks okay to you Put the, put the model in your transmitter and check the swash movement on the actual heli. Make sure everything looks to be working properly with the motors disabled for safe bench testing, of course. You know, disable the motors so you're not suddenly going to have the rotors hitting you as you're testing things. And check that as you change the pitch, it changes properly. As you change the cyclic, it moves properly. And as you move the cyclic uh, stick all the way around with the pitch in different ranges, that everything moves the way it should. With the values at 0 and 42, as suggested, you should get full proportional control over the full range of stick movement at 100% cyclic input rates over the full range of pitch. And you basically have to set the values down to 42 to get that full control over the whole range of everything at 100% rates. If you don't need the full range of pitch, if you're going to use a reduced pitch curve that doesn't go all the way to 100%, you could set the heli source weights a little higher than 42 and still get full control over the cyclic range. Some people might be prepared to sacrifice full control at the edges of stick throw in order to get more positive control near the center. That's your choice. But hopefully, in this video, I've clarified the options. If I've managed to explain things understandably, if I haven't, please ask in the comments and I will try to clarify. Uh, it is, of course, possible that there will be changes in future versions of OpenTX that will remove the need for some of these considerations. Honestly, I hope so. I, I would like to see a situation where swash limiting worked properly when combined with rates from the input page, if we're going to have swash limiting, and where without swash limiting, with zero in swash ring, so there's no swash limiting, with the default values on the heli page, the cyclic servo channels did not reach 100% until maximum commanded inputs. That is what I would ideally like to see, but this is not currently the case, and this is why I'm showing how to work around what is currently the case here. So, check your controls thoroughly before flying, and be careful out there. And as always, if I've not made things clear, or if you have additional questions beyond what I've gone into, please post in the comments, and I will do my best to respond to you.